So in this video, we're going to go ahead and build some pretty basic start-stop logic and get into telepace programming a little bit. So let's go ahead and create a new project. When we create a new project, um, it's going to ask you a couple a couple things. One thing is going to ask you what type of SCADA pack you're using. Um, so if we go through the SCADA packs here, this top row, pretty much all these are obsolete except for the SCADA pack 100. And then uh, the SCADA pack 100 is just a small SCADA pack with minimal I.O., no analog outputs, and you can't use any expansion modules on it. Next is your SCADA pack 32. So there's a SCADA pack 32 and a 32P. The 32P is just this top board. The 32 is a top board controller with a bunch of bottom board I.O. Uh, you'll typically see these in applications where they need up to 10 gas flow runs in uh, the real flow. Next is your 300 series SCADA pack. So 350, you select a 350 or a 357 if you're using a 357 in an application. Um, you just pick the same controller for both. Um, then you get into your 330 or 334. 330 is the top board. Um, 334 is the top board and the bottom board. And then you get into the SCADA pack 313 or 314, sorry, which is the uh, dumbed down version of a SCADA pack 334. Then you get into your flow station, which is a pre built SCADA pack program for lift stations in the water, wastewater side of things. Um, and you go to the bottom here, you have your transmitters with built in SCADA packs with 4202s, which are obsolete. And then you get into your 4203s, which are your multi variable with a built in SCADA pack, so it does have some IO. Uh, the two models are a bit different. One has two analog inputs, the other has one analog output. And then they both have a DIO and a counter input as well. Um, and then last but not least is you have your Noct T60, which is your Foxborough Coriolis meter with a built-in SCADA pack. So we're going to go ahead and pick SCADA pack 350 because obviously that's what we're using today and hit OK. Once you've done that, the first thing that you need to do is land all your register assignment or land all your I.O. into Modbus registers. So that's what we'll do. So when we go into register assignment, we'll open that up. For uh, simplicity reasons, I'm just going to pick a 5 volt 20 milliamp version. So we were using SCADA pack 350 still. So 5 volt 20 milliamp. Double click on that. It gets populated down here. I'm going to leave this as default so you can move these registers around but here it shows you shows us that our counter inputs uh, the first counter input lands into 30,009 so I'll have to remember that because we are using that in other labs uh, counter input 1 lands in 30,011 and counter input 2 lands in 30,013 and then we could go ahead and expand the rest your analog inputs are here we're using the first four here so we have to remember that AI0 uses uh, register 30,001 AI1 uses 30,002, AI2 uses 30,003, and AI3 uses 30,004. Next, you have your digital inputs. So we are using DIO1 as, or DIO0, sorry, as a uh, DI. So we got to make sure that we write this down. DIO0 is 10,001. We also use the next three as well. So DI1 is 10,002, DI2 is 10,003, and DI3 is 10,004. So I want to make sure we write those down because we are using our DIOs as DIs, uh, especially the first four. And then you have your analog outputs if you care to use those as well as um, DOs. So we know that we're using DIO1 as a DI or DIO0 as a DI, DIO1 as a DI. DIO2 is a DI and DIO3 is a DI. So we could just ignore those. One thing we want to write down is DO4 or what we would uh, call DIO4. Uh, we're going to use as a DO. So we want to make sure that we write down register 5 as well. Now we're going to go ahead and build a little bit of ladder logic. So let's go ahead and drag and drop a normally open contact as well as normally closed contact and a coil. Make sure you don't drag and drop a one-shot by accident. We're going to be using a coil here. As well as we'll need a latch here. So we'll need another normally open contact. One, you could copy and paste stuff as well as you could just start typing. So if we type in norm, it'll be normally open or normally closed contact. If we accidentally pick the wrong contact, maybe we want this to be normally open instead. You could right-click on it and go toggle contact type. We want these two in parallel, so we also want to um, select the contact above and hit toggle vertical shunt. When you do that, it makes it in parallel. What we're going to use this is a start push button. This is a stop, and then this to simulate maybe a contact for a motor, and then this will be the latch for this uh, um, start stop that we're creating. So we go ahead, 10,001 we know is our first switch. We could change this to 10,002 as well as we know DIO4 we're going to use as a DO which is um, DO4 is address 5 
and then this will be the latching contact which will make address 5 as well. You can also give these names so obviously this will be our start button this will be our stop button and then this will be our pretend motor that will be turning on which will change both of these because they're using the same register. So now that we have that all built, we can go ahead and write that to the SCADA pack. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my SCADA pack in over USB to my computer. Once that's plugged in, I'm going to change from my PC communication settings for Modbus RTU to Modbus USB. Once I've done that, I'm just going to hit uh, configure settings. Typically, you'll always be on automatic, but if you had two SCADA packs plugged in over USB and you wanted to pick one of them, you can also use this contact to uh, a certain controller with a control ID. I always use this to cheat to make sure that the SCADA pack is connected. So now I can see the controller ID of the SCADA pack that I just plugged in over USB and I know it's working. So I'll just go to automatic connection again, hit cancel. And then I'm going to go ahead and write this program to the SCADA pack. Um, one thing you'll notice is we just cold booted this SCADA pack, so it has gone back to default. And one thing when you do that, it locks the controller. This is a new security setting in all SCADA packs. So it says, command cannot be executed on a locked controller. So we hit OK. So let's go down to controller security. Uh, the one thing it's going to ask you is, do you want to give it a password or say that device does not require a password? So we're going to hit device does not require a password and essential it's never gonna ask me that again so I'll hit apply hit OK so now we could go ahead and write this program to the SCADA pack again now that the program is written we could hit the monitor button as well it's gonna ask if we want to go into debug which we do and now you can see that we're online with it because the power rail is um, red here so it's coming to this contact obviously the contacts open so the power is not going through but also shows the stop buttons yellow so it means it's satisfied and so essentially once we hit the start button it will go right through and turn on the motor another thing you can look at is the diagnostics which are all down here it could show you that it wrote everything if you want to take a look but i'm just going to go ahead and minimize that um, so what i'm going to do is go ahead and toggle that start button Obviously it turned on for a second there, but stayed on because it's latched. Everything's working good. You can also see that the um, DI04 or register five is on because you can see the light. So we go ahead and turn the stop button off now as well. And everything turns off and that um, DI04 is also off now. So everything's working properly. So one thing you could also do is if that start button wasn't working and you want to force it for testing uh, your logic, we go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and highlight everything. Right click on it, hit monitor element. When you hit monitor element, you want to add all of this stuff into a group to monitor. So maybe you call this motor, because that's what's controlling. All that information will come up here. So what we could do is um, force any of these. So we're going to force the start button. So just double click on it, change it from obviously off to on because we're forcing it and then to the force position, hit apply. You'll notice it uh, turns up in red as well as it's red here, as well as you'll notice that force button is on in your SCADA pack as well. So you'll notice that, so I could cancel it there. Another thing is if you go under your force registers, you'll notice that there's a force register here. So say if you want to pull it off, you can just hit this unforce all. Typically when you're doing testing, you force a bunch of registers and you just want to pull them all off at once. So we'll do that. Pulls it off, is no longer in red. And if we hit our start stop button, it does stop the circuit as well. So that's a good, uh, good way to learn how to force something. So here in my motor group, that's where I did it all. So if you want to go back there. One other thing we could do is if you are creating logic and you want to add some while you are online, you just hit the edit online button. Maybe we want to add a, a second motor to this. So we'll drag and drop another coil. This will be register six, which is just the following DIO. So that'll be DIO five. We'll call this motor two. 
well, I guess I'll use capitals. As well as we need to put this in parallel to turn on at the same time. So we will toggle vertical shunt. Now they're in parallel. So we go ahead and hit monitor, which will write our changes. Hit OK and yes. Now we're back online. We'll go ahead and turn that start button on. Starts it all. Latches again. You can go ahead and see that both the LED lights are on. And then we go ahead and stop and see that both lights will now turn off as well.